Hello my fellow Americans, another rant. Today we're going to talk about climate change. Man-made climate change. Now you notice they had to change the phrasing from global warming to climate change because the global warming model isn't working anymore. What kills me is you have scientists predicting what the weather is going to be like 10, 20, 50, 100 years from now when they can't even get the forecast right for next week. Uh, I don't know. But I can tell you this, I did some research in the 70s, scientists were saying that the temperature had been dropping for the last several decades and they predicted that sometime during the mid 90s we were going to slip into a new ice age. And of course, this was all caused by man-made pollution and that we needed stricter guidelines on factories and cars and everything else that created this pollution that was destroying our planet. They also said that sometime in the late 80s, at, at the current rate that we were using fossil fuels, sometime in the late 80s to mid 90s, we were going to be completely out of fossil fuels. Coal, gas, and oil were going to be completely depleted. So we needed to get busy working on alternative sources of energy right now to keep us, you know, to keep society as we know it from dissolving, which was their big push for nuclear power and you know dams and solar power and wind turbines and all these other things that the government has spent billions and billions of dollars on trying to reproduce and yet now we discover we have enough coal to last for 2,000 years we have enough natural gas to last us for 800 years or so and oil is going to go another two or three hundred years for sure with what we have now, but also they just recently discovered a new oil field in the United States is bigger than anything that's ever been discovered, even in Saudi Arabia. So we got enough fossil fuels to go for a long time. And the truth is, this carbon greenhouse gas that they keep talking about, the amount, the amount of carbon in the atmosphere is actually lower now than it has been in centuries. Let that sink in for a minute. How could carbon, CO2, in the air be causing global warming if there's less CO2 in the atmosphere than in previous centuries? Interesting. Very interesting. Now, I'm not doubting climate change. We do have climate change. Temperatures go up, temperatures go down. It cycles up and down because the Earth, number one, has a built-in thermostat. It's called the polar ice cap. It's called the oceans. The sun beats down on the Earth. The oceans absorb the majority of that heat the oceans, because of the rotation of the earth, causes the oceans to spin in a clockwise manner. The water circulates up towards the pole and back down towards the equator in the south. It goes down towards the pole and up towards the equator. So it heats up around the equator, circulates down to the poles where the ice caps are, cools off and comes back up, dissipating that heat. If there's extra heat from the sun, which is typically caused by variations in the sun either from what are those called sunspots or other things like that you know solar winds you know increased sun activity increases the heat and the energy coming off the sun increases the heat and energy on the earth heats up the water will actually melt the polar ice caps a bit which provides more water, which provides a greater cooling effect, which cools the planet back down, 
which causes the polar ice caps to rebuild. The polar ice caps get bigger and smaller and bigger and smaller. We even have ancient maps of Antarctica showing no ice on it at all. So obviously the climate changes and obviously several centuries ago we didn't have factories and cars and planes and whatever creating carbon gases that were in turn creating a global warming effect causing the polar ice gas to melt. It obviously was doing it on its own. And we've obviously had ice ages and we've had hot times, whatever that, I don't know what, you, I guess, warming ages. Um, and if man-made pollution is causing global warming here on our planet, what's causing it on all the other planets? Why is Jupiter and Saturn, why are their weather patterns going crazy? Why is Neptune giving off x-rays? Why is, um, for instance, what happened to the polar ice caps on Mars? If you look at pictures from 10, 20 years ago, the polar ice caps on Mars were huge. They took up almost a third of the planet. Now you look at them, they're virtually non-existent. Last time I checked, Mars didn't have any cars or planes or factories or farting cows or whatever you want to blame all the carbon on or the global warming on. They don't have that sort of thing. Another fact is, granted, there's what? Seven plus billion of us now on the planet. But do you realize if you took all seven billion of us and put us together in one space and had us stand shoulder to shoulder like a giant military formation, we would all fit in Los Angeles. Let that sink in a minute. All seven billion of us could fit in Los Angeles. If you look if you stand back and look at a globe and look at Los Angeles, <laughs> it's just a little dot on the map. Doink. And you're going to tell me that that little dot on the map has such an impact on the entire planet that we're going to destroy it by our pollution. I don't think so. The fact that we believe that such a tiny little speck of humanity can affect the entire planet and cause it to freaking crash and burn in the universe is so arrogant it's beyond even discussion. It's ridiculous. And besides that, global warming, climate change, all that stuff has nothing to do with saving the planet, I promise you. What they're doing is they need something, the globalists, the elites, the multinational corporations that are behind all the politicians and all the things that are going on these days, all politicians are corrupt, they are all been bought out, except Donald Trump and a few of his guys, but different, different conversation. Those guys want to take over the world. They want free trade with all the different countries so they don't have to pay tariffs back and forth. And they can make more profits. Which, they don't want borders because they want people to be able to move around freely and be able to go into different countries and, and you know, again, they can, it, it, it all goes back to the global multinational corporations that are trying to control your life want a world government so they can control the world. They already do, but it's hard to maintain control because you have these pesky little countries like America, which is a republic, rebels against it and says, no, we're Americans. We have the greatest country in the world, and we're not just going to give it up. We fought for this bitch. Blood, sweat, and tears, and I'll be damned if we're going to give it up. Anyway, what they need is something. In order to form a world government, they need a cause. 
They need something that they can get everybody in the world to agree on so that they can create a government. They won't call it a government. It's a, an entity, a global climate change entity oversight group that is going to be in charge of taxing everybody so that they can control us. You see, if they make using too much energy, thereby producing too much carbon as a crime or something you can be punished or penalized for or taxed on, then they can take it away from you. Having energy becomes a privilege. Heating your house, having air conditioning, driving your own car, it all becomes a traveling. Everything becomes, watching TV, becomes a privilege that's controlled by this one world government entity called climate control, whatever. Climate, what is that? Climate change controllers, which again are backed by the big corporations. So it all comes down to enslaving you. Taxes are not freedom. There's no free lunch. There's no free medical care. There's no free education. There's no free anything. As soon as you let somebody else give you a living wage, free medical care, free uh, energy, free... Somebody is paying for that. But as soon as you take that from the government, you now become the government's bitch. You are a slave to the government, as we all are. Most Americans spend three to six months out of the year just to pay their taxes. It's ridiculous because income tax isn't the only tax you pay. There's property tax, registering your car, getting a driver's license, on and on and on, sales tax, excise tax. They tax everything. And it's all a version of control. Our country existed for 140 years without taxes because our federal government was small. They weren't in our business. They didn't have a multi-trillion dollar budget every year. And they were able to pay for their budget through the excise and tariffs, excise taxes and tariffs. That paid for everything. They didn't have to tax people individually. A graduated individual income tax and a central bank are two of the ten planks of the Communist Manifesto. McCarthy was right. The Communists have taken over our country. We just took it back. We want to keep it. But we need massive reform. We need a French Revolution politically. I don't mean actually going out and cutting people's heads off and whatever, but we knew need to go out and cut their power off, cut their bureaucracy off, get rid of their regulations, get rid of their taxes, get rid of their control over our freaking lives and bring our life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness back. Our rights are our rights. They're given to us by God, not by the government. They can't take them away. They can't control them. They can't regulate them. They can't tax them. God bless.